Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Big Me Gaily, a color e-ink tablet. This is the world's first tablet that uses the e-ink gallery 3 technology, which is to say the e-ink colors will look vibrant and the visuals are sharp. Now this is a review unit provided by the company and this is a working sample. This is not the production unit or the retail unit so there can still be changes to the performance and the functionality that I'm about to show you in this video. At the time of making this video, this tablet is on Kickstarter and the fundraising campaign will end on the 31st of December 2022. And this tablet is quite pricey. I'm going to list the prices for this tablet on the screen right now. So these are the prizes and uh, rewards you can expect with this campaign. In this video, I'm just going to present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not this tablet is worth the money. Just to give you the bottom line up front, if you want the best colors with this tablet, you have to go with HD color mode. And that's the mode that you see here. And the colors actually look pretty good for a color e-ink tablet. The downside is the increased or longer screen refresh time. So if you want the tablet to update the pages much faster, you have to go with normal color mode. But the compromise is the colors will look more washed out, relatively speaking. One of the main selling points for this tablet is there is Google Play Store. So you will have access to a huge variety of apps. As to how well those apps work, it really depends on the app itself. I'll talk more about that later. But just to give it to you straight, this tablet works best as a tablet to read books. If you want to use this to browse the web, take photos, um, or do anything else other than reading, the user experience is not going to be ideal. And the battery life can be better. I was only able to get about six to maybe seven hours of battery life, which is, I would say, average. And now on to the full review. Let's take a look at the items included in the box. The packaging is quite nice. This is a slip case. So there is a pen, two replacement nibs, a nib remover, the ejection tool for the micro SD card slot, quick start guide, warranty card, a USB-A to USB-C cable, and the tablet. This is the included pen. The build quality is solid, and this is comfortable to hold. The surface is glossy. And there is this connector here, which will connect to the tablet for charging. I'm not sure how long the battery life of this pen is, but battery life is not something I would worry about since you can connect this to the side of the tablet at all times. There is a laser light here at the back and you can turn it on by double clicking this shortcut button. And there are three shortcut buttons. That's the power button and the shortcut for the laser light. That's the power light indicator. These three buttons are customizable. I have already assigned a short click to the power button to refresh the page. And if I click and hold, it will go to the home screen. The functions of these two buttons will vary depending on the app you are using. When you are reading, these two buttons will turn the pages. When you're listening to music, they will adjust the volume. This pen supports 4,000 over levels of pressure sensitivity and there is palm rejection. And this pen nib is textured and there is very little to no movement so it doesn't go in and out. The textured pen tip and the matte textured surface of the display provides a nice tactile writing experience. I will talk more about the writing experience later on. Let's take a look at the design. So I've just powered off the tablet and this is the picture that's on the tablet when it's powered off. The shape of this tablet is kind of squarish. It's quite thin and the weight is 320 grams. So this is considered lightweight for an eight inch tablet. So this is a compact and portable design. The design also looks rather clean and simple. On the side here, there are two speakers. The audio quality is all right. It's loud and clear, but beyond a certain level, there can be distortion. 
At the top, there are four noise cancelling mics, and this is the power button with built-in fingerprint sensor. On the left side, there is a connector for the pen. So you can attach the pen magnetically to the side here for charging. The magnet or the magnet is strong, but you can still dislodge the pen if you apply enough force. And at the bottom, there is the USB-C charging port and the micro SD card slot. Design on the back mirrors, the front, there is a camera here and also a camera in front. And I'm not sure what this material is. This is matte textured. And the overall finishing is quite nice. The frame on the four sides are metal and you can see they are curved. Let's power this on so that we can look at the user interface. So listed by the site are the specifications for this tablet. This tablet uses an 8-core processor at 2.3 GHz. There is 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. And storage is expandable with the micro SD card slot. So this will take some time to boot up. This tablet runs on Android 11 and this is the user interface on top of Android 11. So at the top, you can see some shortcut buttons. That's the shortcut for the home screen. Display settings. This is where you can customize the contrast, colors, pitch refresh, color mode. This button will show you all the apps that are installed on this tablet. That's the pen settings. This button will show you all the active apps that are opened. Split screen mode, settings, the back button, Wi-Fi status, 4G, the pen's battery life, and the battery life for the tablet. There are more shortcut buttons on the left side, and these are all customizable, so you can add and remove any shortcut you want here. For meeting records, this allows you to record audio during a meeting, and there is transcribing functionality as well as note-taking. Offline books will show you all the books that are in your internal storage. This is the local storage folder. There is cloud features for syncing and backup. And these small apps will show you all the apps that are installed on this tablet. There is the note taking app and there is Google Play Store. So to customize the shortcuts here, you can tap here on menu management. And here you can turn on or off the shortcuts that you want to appear on the left side. And any apps that you install through the Google Play Store will appear here. So you can add whatever apps you want from here to the sidebar. Somewhere on the display, you can also find a little circle, which is another shortcut button. And this circle can be moved around. So when you tap on the circle, there will be this fly out menu with more shortcuts. This is for the home screen, back button, the active apps button, refresh, screenshot, page buttons for flipping pages, the settings for this shortcut button and the power off button. And if you don't want to use this, you can just tap on the settings button and turn the floating ball off. The fingerprint sensor works like this. You have to press one, lift your finger and press down again for the sensor to scan your finger. Let's talk about the image quality of this display. So this is an 8 inch colored e-ink display with a resolution of 1440 by 1920. The pixel density is 300 ppi. Pixelation is not noticeable, so all the visuals will look sharp. According to the company, this is the world's first tablet that uses the e-ink gallery 3 display. E-ink, by the way, is a separate company that develops display technology. So that's the technology that you see here. And depending on the color mode you choose, that will affect the image quality as well as the page refresh or the redraw time. And there are three color settings to choose from. This is called refresh mode, but I'm going to call this the color mode because it actually affects the colors as well as the refresh time. 
So for HD mode, you will get the most vivid colors. For normal mode, the colors will appear slightly washed out, relatively speaking, compared to HD mode. And there is black and white mode, which will convert all your color images to black and white. So obviously, black and white will have the fastest refresh or screen redraw time, followed by normal and HD. According to E-Ink, the black and white update time is up to 350 milliseconds. For fast color mode, it's 5 milliseconds. For standard color mode, it's 750 to 1000 milliseconds. That's one second. And for the best color mode, it's up to 1.5 seconds. The only color adjustment that I recommend here would be vivid enhancement to increase the saturation for the colors. Dark enhancement will increase the black value. So even if you increase it by maybe 10%, you can see the images will be visibly darker so that does not look good to me and if you increase the color brightness the colors will look washed out yep so the contrast is not really there but if you increase the vivid enhancement you can get more saturated colors more vibrant colors you may notice there was some delay with the screen refresh or screen redraw time. That's because I'm using the HD mode. If I switch over to normal mode, the screen will redraw faster. With normal mode, the canvas color is slightly warm with this yellow tint. And with HD mode, the canvas color is this very light neutral gray. So by comparison, you can see the HD mode due to the lighter background will actually provide more contrast and actually help the colors look more vivid compared to using normal mode with the slightly yellow canvas. To get the best colors, go with HD mode and 100% vivid enhancement. If you want faster page redraw times, go with normal mode. Normal mode with 100% vivid enhancement will not look as good as HD mode without any enhancement. And adjusting this enhancement settings here will not affect the pitch redraw time. And here there is the system full refresh frequency, which will determine how often the pitch will redraw to remove image retention. So here I have set it to one time. You can set it up to 10 to 50 times. E-Ink displays will have image retention, so that's to be expected. And image retention usually appears as traces of the previous page because the tablet is not able to remove the previous page completely before giving you the new page. With the normal color mode of this tablet, there is the typical image retention and sometimes there is also traces of yellow smudges. You can refresh the page to remove image retention. Let me do it right now. I've set the shortcut button here to refresh the page. But the yellow smudge will not be removed completely. The yellow smudge here will only go off by itself after a few pages. And here I can see that yellow smudge again. This yellow smudges will only appear with the normal color mode. They will not appear with the HD color mode. So if you switch over to HD, which I'm going to do so right now, just to let you see the difference, the color of the canvas will change to this light gray, light neutral gray, and all the smudges will be removed. And if you flip a page now, by the way, this is much slower because Kindle has this page moving animation, which is quite irritating. So you can see there are no yellow smudges with this new page. And the contrast is much better because of the lighter neutral gray canvas color. There's one additional thing you need to know about the system full refresh frequency. The number of times that you set here with the shortcut buttons at the top will affect the user interface and certain apps. However, sometimes depending on the e-reader app that you're using, you may have to set the refresh frequency for that book individually. So for example, with this graphic novel, if I flip the pages, I can see image retention. Even though the page refresh has already been set to one page. And also notice as I flip through the color pages, the 
refresh time is actually quite fast just that even though I set the image sorry the page refresh to one page I still see some image retention so here you will have to go into the books settings tap here at the bottom right to set the refresh rate to one time and now as I turn the page I don't see any image retention and again the pages can load quite fast and the app you are using will also affect the page refresh time and now I'm going to show you a series of images and switch between the different color modes HD with 100% and 0% vivid enhancement versus normal mode with 100% and 0% vivid enhancement so this is normal color mode with 0% vivid enhancement and the colors look slightly washed out to me I'm going to increase the vivid enhancement to 100% and let you see the difference so the colors now appear slightly more vibrant but since this is still normal mode the canvas is still this uh, still has this yellow tint but this actually looks pretty good let me switch over to HD mode with 0% enhancement so as mentioned HD mode with 0% enhancement will look better than the normal color mode with 100% vivid enhancement due to the light neutral gray canvas the colors look more vibrant by contrast and also the colors are just more vibrant and saturated so this looks really nice this reminds me of printed comics on newspaper in the past but newspaper paper is actually uh, darker has this darker gray the gray here is much lighter let me switch over to HD mode and 100% vivid enhancement and now the colors are even more vibrant I can see the blues the yellows the orange they are more vibrant and not just that I can see colors with the clouds as well this is the original image on an LCD display and notice the colors for the clouds here the shadow areas they are actually great but when you turn on vivid enhancement for HD mode, they actually will add colors to even those gray areas. On the screen right now are the four images with different color modes and color settings. So this is how they look or how different they look at a glance. I'm going to go into local storage here to look for my image. This is how the icons look. You may see some familiar images here let's open the color wheel this is an e-ink display so the colors will not appear as vibrant compared to lcd displays the colors look all right to me perhaps orange could be more vibrant and maybe the green can be more obvious the primary colors yellow red and blue look all right to me purple looks all right and shown on the screen right now are the four variations of color modes and color settings so you can compare them at a glance here's the last image that I want to show you this is another book cover and this is how the original cover looks you can see the green here we have primary colors here on the tent and this is the e-ink colors I think it looks all right uh, it would be better if this is more obvious but this still looks all right and shown on the screen right now are the different variations of color modes and color settings for this book cover and now I want to talk a bit more about screen refresh or update time right now I'm using HD color mode with 100% vivid enhancement 
The amount of vivid enhancement will not affect the screen update time. It's the color mode that will affect the update time, HD versus normal versus black and white. So now I'm using HD and I'm going to flip a few pages to let you see the refresh time. This is a blank page. This is a black and white page. This is a colored page. So as I flip to a new color page, you can see the previous page will dissolve and the new page will kind of appear. And this is with the default X Reader app, and this is a PDF document or PDF comic. And as I switch over, flip over to the black and white pages, the pages will update much faster now because there is no color information. I've just switched over to normal color mode, so now you can see the colors are slightly washed out and the canvas is a bit yellowish. So the page refresh for normal color mode is noticeably faster. Yep, it's noticeably faster. And also the black and white pages are much faster as well. So if you want to have better colors, then the refresh time is going to be longer. But for me, I would say it's still acceptable. But how fast or how long the refresh time will take really depends on the app you use. And for the X Reader app that's included with the tablet, the HD color mode and the normal color mode refreshes uh, the pages quite fast, at least fast enough for me. One of the main selling points for this tablet is there is Google Play Store, so you can install whatever apps you want to open whatever file format that your comic book is in. So right now I'm using Amazon Kindle and the uh, e-reader app you use will also determine the refresh time. So let's take a look at some of the pages with this uh, book, which is Scott Pilgrim. This is normal color mode. And I'm going to flip a few pages to let you see the refresh time. It actually looks all right. The refresh time looks all right. It looks fast enough for me, just that with normal color mode, the colors are slightly washed out compared to HD color mode. So now I'm going to switch over to HD color mode to let you see the difference between screen refresh time. Swipe down from the top, tap on the display settings and switch to HD color mode. Yeah, now the colors look much better. There is better contrast and more vibrant colors. So as I flip to the new page, you can see the screen sort of refreshes two times before the new page is drawn. I've been told by the company that they are going to fix this issue so that the page can refresh faster because this is slower compared to the earlier comic that I showed you that was opened with the default X Reader app. So with Amazon Kindle, Normal color mode will refresh much faster than HD color mode at the time of making this video with the firmware that I am using. This is the Libby app by Overdrive, which allows you to connect to libraries so that you can borrow books from libraries. Unfortunately for this app, there is this page turning animation, which cannot be turned off. That's due to the app. It's not due to this tablet. So when you are turning pages, you can see the page move slowly to the left side due to the slow uh, refresh rate. This is normal color mode. If I switch over to HD color mode, the pages will move uh, even more slowly. Let me just do that just to let you uh, see. So now the colors appear more vibrant. And there is also this um, shimmering effect before the page is drawn completely. Same as what you saw earlier with the HD color mode when I was using Amazon Kindle. So as I turn the page, you can see the page moves slowly. Yep, the colors look good. Uh, the contrast is good. 
but the pages move slowly. So that's the current limitation with third-party apps right now. To optimize the app, when you're using the app, go to the settings button at the top there, tap on app optimization, and you can tweak the different settings to get the best performance. At the time of making this video, I don't really see uh, much improvement to the screen refresh time with HD color mode. So hopefully the developers can update this because the hardware is actually capable of doing the refresh faster. It's just that the software is not able to do that yet. And this is Libby app again with black and white mode. I just want to show you how fast the text pages flip. So this app still has the page moving animation and that affects user experience. Hopefully the developers can optimize the tablet for this app because Libby is a very popular app. And this is Amazon Kindle with black and white mode. Seems to update slightly faster compared to Libby. And this is the default X Reader app that's included with the tablet. And the pages, the black and white pages update much faster compared to Amazon and Libby. This is how the light looks in the dark. You can increase the brightness all the way and the lighting seems to be quite even. I do not see any weird patterns at the edge of the tablet. And you can increase the warm light in addition to the brightness. And again, there is no weird pattern at the edges. It's only when you have the warm light on and you reduce the brightness on the left side, that's when you can actually see some glow on the left side. And when you reduce the warm light, the glow is more obvious. The wavy light pattern only appears when you are using the warm light at low levels. Let's take a look at other functionality for this tablet, such as the pre-installed apps. There is meeting records. This will allow you to record meetings, like record the audio while it transcribes what's being said. So I'm going to tap on the recording button and this app should be recording me right now using the microphones at the top but I don't find the translation um, or the transcribing functionality to be that accurate. So the developers will need to improve on that. And while this is happening, the transcribing is happening, you can take notes at the bottom because there is this notepad here. Let me show you some other things that I actually use like taking notes. So that's the default note taking app. And the user interface that you see here may be different from what you have seen in other videos made by other YouTubers because the firmware is constantly being updated. So this is actually the latest uh, UI that I have. There are four brushes here, pen, pencil, brush, and ballpoint, and five colors, black, red, blue, magenta, and yellow, and you can choose the thickness of the pen. So I'm going to choose brush. There is palm rejection, so you can rest your palm on the display while you write. And the note taking and handwriting experience or performance is actually pretty good. There is the usual latency, but this is still fast enough for taking notes and this is able to capture my handwriting quite accurately. The time for the strokes to appear is the same for HD and normal color mode. When it comes to taking notes, the main difference between HD versus normal color mode is with HD mode, the UI will take longer to update, that's all. But for writing, the speed is the same. Let's take a look at the highlighter. 
there are also just five colors to choose from that's yellow and the yellow looks bright and vibrant enough let's take a look at magenta oh the magenta actually appears beneath yellow so it's not transparent it looks like there is some sort of stacking or there well, let's take a look at red yep so red appears behind yellow as well so this is something the developers will have to update make the highlighter transparent or at least have the option to choose whether or not the highlighter can be made transparent right now the functionality for this default note-taking app is quite limited but again because there is google play store you can install your own note-taking apps this is microsoft OneNote. as you can see the latency is quite bad but you can optimize this app just tap on this pen button here turn on global handwriting you can just use the default settings and now this is more responsive this is where you can find all your installed apps you can reach this page or this folder by pressing this shortcut button at the top let's take a look at camera so there are two cameras with this tablet the front and the back user experience with the camera is not ideal due to the low refresh rate of the e-ink display i've installed youtube as well and i do not recommend watching videos on this tablet unless you don't mind watching your videos at 1 fps per second web browsing is not ideal with this tablet as well due to the slow refresh rate so as you scroll the web pages you can see the page refresh it's not ideal the thing is many of these android apps are actually designed for proper color displays so due to the lack of colors with e-ink displays many of the apps will have designs that don't look that great due to the lack of contrast and also the lack of colors the last thing i want to talk about is battery life the company claims 10 hours of battery life with normal usage i was only able to get over six hours six hours is six hours it's not the best but it's not the worst either anyway i hope the company can update the firmware to improve battery life because this is an e-ink reader so i guess e-ink readers should have better battery life I have also experienced unexpected and excessive power drain overnight which can be up to 40 to 50 percent even when there are no apps open and the Wi-Fi is off so obviously something is draining the power overnight I have already told the company about this so hopefully they can put out a firmware to fix this issue all right to conclude if you want the best colors go with HD color mode at the expense of longer screen refresh time if you don't mind the colors being a bit more washed out all right to conclude if you want the best colors go with hd color mode at the expense of longer screen refresh times if you want faster screen refresh time go with normal color mode but at the expense of having the colors look slightly more washed out I wish the battery life can be longer but that's not a deal breaker for me because i can always charge this at night if you guys are interested to get this tablet you can get it through the kickstarter campaign which will end on the 31st of december 2022 and if you want to get it after the kickstarter campaign for whatever reason the price will be higher all right i hope this review is useful see you guys in the next video bye